Faith Lift. Faith, F-A-I-T-H. I didn't say face lift, because somebody going to leave out of here today and say, Reverend Higgins preached about face lift. Faith lift. And we all need a faith lift. Some of us in here have been praying to God for the same thing for a long, long time. God, why haven't I heard from you yet? Wondering, when is God going to answer my prayer? God, I see everybody else getting their prayers answered but me. So, so, so when are you going to answer my prayer? Even though we have a relationship with God, sometimes we get a little down because we can't understand why God allows some things to happen. God, I've been serving you. I've been tithing to your church. I've been giving of myself. I've been helping in the food bank. I've been singing in the choir. I've been doing all these things. And and sometimes I give my last. I know you're there. But sometimes I don't know you're there. As strong as my faith is, every now and then, we all need little reminders. Some of us have been waiting for a response for the same prayer, five years, 10 years, 15 years, and still waiting. What do we do when we have to wait on God? The word says to wait on the Lord. It's easy to preach about waiting when we're not the ones waiting. Tell that to the one who's serving a life sentence for a crime that he didn't commit. Tell that to the child who has to live in the midst of abuse. Tell that to the person who was told by their lifelong spouse that they're leaving and not coming back. Tell that to the child who's been waiting for daddy to come home and they still waiting. What do we do when God puts us on hold? Here we read about a woman who did not immediately get her prayer answered. You heard it read, Jesus did not answer a word. In fact, Jesus was silent and didn't respond to her prayer request. She said, Lord, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. And Jesus didn't say anything. What do we do when God is silent? Jesus, along with his disciples, traveled 50 miles northwest to Tyre and Sidon. They were not in Jewish country, but they were in Gentile country. Jews and Gentiles didn't have much to do with each other because it was a race issue. But regardless of black, white, Jew, Gentile, man, or woman, salvation is for all of us. So this Canaanite woman, a Gentile who is begging Jesus to deliver her daughter from a demon. Now to the Jews, Canaan meant one thing, enemy. Canaanites were long-standing enemies with the Jews. So here Jesus was with his disciples spending some time in enemy territory. Not a coincidence. And here comes the woman begging for Jesus' help. She addresses Jesus with a title that only the Jews would understand. She said, O Lord, King of David, a title for the Messiah. So now the Gentiles didn't have that kind of belief. This woman grew up in a country where they had beliefs in many other gods. God of the sun, God of the rain, God of the wind, a God for this and a God for that. But she knew that only the one true God, that he was the only one who could really help her. Here Jesus is spending all this time with the Jews trying to convince them to believe that he is the Messiah. And here is the Canaanite woman who already knew that. (laughs) So somewhere along the way, she had heard about Jesus. Jesus' name had been brought up before. She heard about Jesus from somewhere. She heard about a man called the son of David. 
She heard about a man called the Messiah. She heard about a man called the Savior. And she was taking advantage of this very moment. So she must have heard that Jesus could make the blind see. That Jesus could make the deaf hear. That Jesus could make the mute speak. Yes. That Jesus could make the lame walk. She must have heard that Jesus could feed 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish. And she heard about the woman with the issue of blood. She heard about him parting the Red Sea. She heard so much, she heard the miraculous. So there was no doubt in her mind what Jesus could do for her. She said, have mercy on me, O oh Lord. My daughter is demon possessed. How many times have we prayed the same prayer over and over and God was silent? We felt like God was ignoring us. In fact, we couldn't even feel God's presence. Was it a test? The woman repeatedly makes her request and repeatedly begs for Jesus' help. And then the disciples say to Jesus, send the woman away. Because she keeps crying after us. She's getting on our nerves, basically. Either they wanted her to go away because she was a nuisance, or they wanted Jesus to hurry up and heal her, her daughter because she won't go away and leave him alone. What do you do when everybody around you seem to be getting their prayers answered but you? So first, we want to take a look at our circumstances. No matter what is happening around us, no matter what is happening to us, we have to keep trusting in God, O oh, ye of little faith. Keep being faithful to the God who has always been faithful to us. Oh God, I don't know about this present moment, but I know you've been faithful to me in all of my yesterdays. You've been there for me all week. You've been there for me all month. You've been there for me all last year. I don't remember a time, God, that you were not faithful. There was never a case that was too hard for God. Even in the midst of the silent treatment, despite her circumstances, she knew that faith still works. It worked then and it still works now. Yeah. Does it mean that Jesus doesn't care or that Jesus is not concerned? Absolutely not. Her circumstances look grim. They look hopeless and helpless, but the woman wouldn't give up. She didn't walk away. She kept on believing that Jesus would eventually speak, that he would eventually do something, and I'm going to stay right here until he does. And see, we got to look at the conversation. Because no matter what is being said or not said, don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the negativity. Don't listen to the gossip. Don't let anyone steer you wrong. Move away from the drama and wait for God to move. Remember, Job lost his family. He lost his health. He lost all of his wealth. He even lost the confidence of his wife. She told him to just curse God and die. But Job knew better because he had faith. You see, faith is a word with many meanings. It can mean absolute trust as shown by the people who came to Jesus for the healing. It can mean a confident hope. Or as James points it out, it can even mean when he speaks of saving faith. We got to be careful to understand faith as Paul uses the word because he ties faith so closely to salvation. It's not something we must do in order to earn salvation, because if that were true, faith would be just one more deed. And Paul clearly stated that human beings can never save us. So instead, faith is a gift from God, gives us because he is saving us. It is God's grace, not our faith, that saves us. But in God's mercy, when he saves us, he gives us faith, a relationship with his son that helps us to become more like him. Through the faith of God gives us, he carries us from death to life. Yeah. The Canaanite woman knew that this was not a lost cause. She was gonna stay there until he blessed her. Things have got to get better. There's a light at the end of the tunnel for me and I'm not leaving God until you bless me. There was Abraham, 100 years old before his first son was born. For years, Abraham wondered when, not why, but when. When will my son come? When will my wife give birth? Abraham kept on believing and he never gave up. 
And look at us, a people, the black race. There was a period of 400 years that were oppressed, held against our will, names changed, beaten for no reason, separated from our families, snatched from the familiar, and brought to an unknown place. But yet we continue to pray, we continue to sing, we continue to worship, we continue to praise God, no matter the circumstances and no matter the conversations that were going on around us. It's as if God put an entire race of people on hold and skipped over us, but yet we never gave up. Look at this conversation between her and Jesus. It's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs, and she said, but even the dog eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. In this story, the Jews are the children, and the Gentiles are the dogs. The children got fed first, and the dogs had to wait. But her answer is just what Jesus wanted to hear. She may not be able to sit at the master's table and eat with the children, but she should be allowed to pick up some of the crumbs that they dropped. She wants what Jesus said she could have, saving grace and mercy for all of God's people. My faith is so strong, I'm willing to take what's left. So no matter the circumstances, no matter the conversation, keep on believing that God will do what he said he will do. So far we heard the voice of the mother and the voice of the disciples, but when Jesus speaks, he makes it very clear that the blessings of God are not only for the Israelites or that salvation was not only for the Jews. He was saying that God sent him to offer salvation to the Jews first. But look here, the Gentile, the Canaanite woman was the one who truly believed. Yeah. Jesus had followers who didn't believe. But yet this woman did. Which means just because we go to church and another person doesn't, does not mean that we get blessed first and they don't. It doesn't mean that the church is in you. It doesn't mean that you have a relationship with Jesus. But then Jesus finally said, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted, and her daughter was healed. So church, no matter the circumstances, no matter the conversations, here is the conclusion that God is eventually going to speak. Yeah. God is going to hear our yeah. cry. Yeah. God is going to speak out on our behalf. Yeah. God will hear us in the midnight hour. Yes. God is going to reveal the answers that we need. Yeah. God will show up right on time. Just hold on. Keep serving. Keep on praising. Keep on singing. Keep on shouting. Keep on worshiping. Keep on hoping. Keep on believing because faith still works. And God has given us a faith lift. So when the diagnosis is terminal and the house is being foreclosed on and the marriage has come to an end and when your household is in disarray, when family has walked out on you, when so-called friends have stabbed us in the back, when the bills are long and the money is short, yeah. when you lose someone close to you, when your child is senselessly gunned down in the street, when your brother is strung out on drugs and you don't know where to turn, when you're still waiting on that answer about a major change on your job, when there's no more songs to sing and love has left the building, oh, when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, when you've been in the hospital for weeks at a time and the doctors don't know what to do, all oh, faith, faith, just a little faith of a mustard seed. Unchanging faith, unwavering faith, undying faith. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Oh, I thank God for saving me. And guess what? I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry and from the waters lifted me now safe am I love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me I know there is a God and he's given us a faith lift this morning so for some of us, 
who had gotten a little weary and thought that God had forgotten about them. God is still right here. Still right here with us. Giving us strength to endure. But we got to believe. We got to have faith. And know that God is coming in his time, not ours. Not easy. Because I, I, I've been praying. I've been praying on something for 30 years. And I'm going to share with this church today. And some of you might be a little shocked. I've been praying the same prayer for 30 years. A lot of you don't even know. I have a biological sister. I have a sister. But I don't talk about her. Because I don't want anybody to ask me any questions. But for 30 years of my 50, she's been on drugs and alcohol. It hurts me to my core. But I truly believe that one day, one day, and she's going to give her life to Christ. And she will have salvation. She turned 60 years old on Friday. For the last five weeks, she was missing. But I didn't have the guts to say anything. Because then people won't wonder, where she get a sister from? I thought she said she had two brothers. I do. But I didn't want to tell you about her. Because it hurts too much. But for 30 years, I've been praying the same prayer. And I believe that one day. And see, when the first week when she went missing, we thought that was the norm. Oh, well, she'll... Somebody will see her on the street. When the second week went by, but when the third week came and nobody saw her, she hadn't been to anybody's house to eat, then I got scared. Because my niece had already put in a missing persons report. And she kept saying, Auntie, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Next thing I know, my niece is in the hospital with high blood pressure because she's getting ready to lose it. She doesn't know where mama is. But on that Sunday night, June 23rd, when that phone rang at 11 p.m., she said, they found my mama. They found my mama, auntie. They found my mama. And I was just praying that she was going to be alive. Because I said, God, you got to answer my prayer. You got to answer my prayer. It's coming one day. I know it is. It's coming. But I'm sharing this story with you. So you know, don't give up. Never give up hope. My faith is lifted every time I hear somebody's testimony. But let us stand to our feet today. Somebody... Somebody walked in feeling like God had forgotten about them. Amen. That God only remembers certain names. But God knows all of our names. And God is calling you right now to come and give your life to Christ. I promise you, it won't be easy but it will be worth it. Just make that step down the aisle. Make that step. Because that is the first step to saying, God, I'm here. God, I, I know you're going to receive me. No matter what I've done, no matter who I've been in the past, I know God is going to take me in.
So all of us here, you know, we got to remember Jesus had 12 disciples. And even though they hung among him, there was still one that we didn't realize had not been converted. So we cannot make the assumption today that everybody in here knows Christ. And someone may be looking for a church home. I've been going from church to church to church. I haven't found God there yet. I'm still looking. God, I'm, I'm st I just need somewhere to plant my feet where I can serve so I don't feel homeless. We all need a place to work out our salvation. We all need reminders every now and then that God is still here. God never left us. Somebody just may need prayer. Just come on down. We will have a word of prayer with you. Gracious and most glorious God, we come at this hour asking you to allow your Holy Spirit to fall on this place. We pray that he will come and minister to these your children who have come to present their situations and circumstances and conditions before your mighty presence with the faith that you have an answer, with the faith that you can fix it. They come with faith in you to do what no earthly power can do. And so we come and offer them up to you, Lord. We lay them in the, on your altar praying that you will just reach down, touch their hearts, minds, and souls, to let them know that you are with them, even in their darkest hour. Be with them, Lord. Help them to realize that it may not be when they want it, but you will always be there when they need you. Keep them in your care, O oh God. Help those of us that can help them to help them. Help us to be encouragement for them. Give them a faith that will not shrink. Though pressed by every foe. That will not tremble on the brink of any earthly woe. Give them faith to know that they have a God that is evil. To do anything but fail. Help them Lord. Help us Lord to hold on and to hold out. Even in our darkest hour, help us to realize that sorrow may last tonight, but joy will come in the morning. This is our prayer, our Father. We pray it to a God that we know will answer. We thank you and we praise your holy name. Thank you, O oh God. 
For we come in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Grant us our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.